Hello again, listeners. Uh, thank you. Thank you again for listening in. Uh, I'll be talking about identifying fault in outcrops. So one question we commonly ask while out there in the outcrop, while there in the field is, um, you ask your neighbor, have you seen the fault yet? I don't see it. I see it there. You know, that can be pretty interesting because sometimes the fault is staring right at you, uh, but we can't see them. So a few things to look out for. Firstly, observe uh, planes of discontinuity, especially where you have evidence of um, strata offsets or uh, lateral juxtaposition of different units. Uh, secondly, you want to also uh, look out for the deep angles of the units on both your left and your right, uh, especially where they have very distinct uh, or very uniquely different angles. Uh, that points to something. Thirdly, the outlook of the rock. Focus on the color, the vegetation or type of vegetation. Uh, also, the amount and type of weathering uh, on both adjacent rocks. Uh, it could be a pointer to some faulting um, across the boundary. And then lastly, evidence of intrusions, um, drag or mineralization are very key. So you want to look out for these um, elements. So I'm just going to show you examples. Um, so the first one, okay, quick one. Just take a minute and look at this. Do you see any evidence of faulting or can you make out the true directions or direction? Okay, so that's it. Uh, so what we see here is the, the units, uh, red and the blue uh, stratigraphic units uh, on the left has been uptrun and that's a foot wall and while on the right has been downtrun. So across the thick white line, uh, which we've interpreted as the fault plane, uh, we so we see that this units uh, this rock uh, this rock units have been downtrown uh, to our left across the white line. So this is another example. If you if you take a moment to look at it very closely, again focus on the bedding planes or bedding angles, uh, colors, and anything that stands out. All right, so. So that's the interpretation. Um, again, we see that the uh, red, green, and blue beds are sub-horizontal, uh, not with a lot of deep. Why you have the dashed white lines on the right are actually steeply dipping. So that tells us there's something across there, and that's the thick black line. That's a false plane. Uh, you also want to observe the four drag materials, uh, which is actually a bunch of materials taken from uh, either or both the hanging and foot wall during the movement of um, one of the fault blocks. So these are very key things to observe uh, or rather to actually uh, identify because it, in the long run it helps us uh, pretty much identify where we have our fault and the sense of throw. So there are other examples I'll be showing. Those are all for the most case inferred or, or concept based. Uh, so this is the first example. So this is an outcrop unit uh, from Enugu, uh, Nigeria. Um, so quickly, this is the interpretation. Again, quick observation, the color, we have area A and area B. We actually see that area A is distinct and different, light to dark gray, but area B is, for the most case, um, you know, um, orange colored. Secondly, you see the vegetation is more in area B and less in area A. Uh, and then you also see that area A is more, actually, stratified uh, you can actually see that the units are you know not uh, like massive like what you have in area b where we don't see any evidence of stratification so the interpretation here is that uh possibly the uh what we have in area b is actually a bunch of materials lying or sitting on on the false plane of this area of this outcrop all right so this is another example uh I'd like you to focus on the vegetation. If if you see anything, uh, if you can make out any potential faults or fracture trends, that would be great. Okay, so so that's the interpretation. Again, you note the unique trend of vegetation, and uh, those are probably zones with very uh, enriched uh, nutrients or distinct minerals. So here we have potentially four uh, fault planes. Taking it, uh, looking at it from this map view. All right, so this is the last example. Uh, again, you want to focus on the word drag. 
Uh, so we want to use the four drug as our evidence or as our guide. So here, the drug is used in the term in the, in the context of uh, plastic flow. So where we have rock units that seem to, you know, make some kind of, you know, curvy linear movement, suggest some kind of plastic flow, um, then we, 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 we use the word drag. So here, this is the interpretation. We have the, what we have on the left with the gentleman standing there, uh, sub-horizontal uh, or rather low angle, uh, low dipping strata, but on the right, you see that the, the deep angles are more and probably in almost opposite sense. The interesting thing is between the both of them, you actually have this zone where you have some kind of plastic movement. That's the fault track zone. So this is the interpretation. We have the hanging wall to the left, uh, to the uh, right and the foot wall to the left. So across it behind the faults uh, is where you have those fault, uh, those uh, drag materials. And uh, this is the uh, final cartoon. So these are just very, you know, a few elements to look out for in identifying um, uh, normal faults. Um, I, I do hope it was uh, helpful. Um, please do not hesitate to ask um, questions. You just shoot me an email, uh, chat me up or, you know, drop a message on, on, on YouTube, on Facebook. Uh, I'll be very glad to respond. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, until next time. Um, this is Ifine Obi.